Hey YouTube, what's happening? This is We All Juggle Knives. Welcome to my review of the Kaiser T2 or Task 2. This was designed by a famous German knife maker named Yuli Hennig. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It's got G10 handle scales. The blade length is 3 and 3 quarters inches. Got a nice stone wash on the blade. That steel is S35 VN steel. That is a very high quality steel. Some people even call it a super steel. This knife has true full tank instruction, and you can see that lanyard slot there. This is the sheath that it comes with. There you see the belt clip. It's a nice fitted sheath. It holds it in pretty securely. It's got that spot to push off with with your thumb to deploy the blade. Right, so it's more of a tactical rather than traditional sheath. It clicks into place. So it's a pretty nice sheath. All right, initial sharpness demonstration. It came quite sharp. Kaiser did an excellent job putting an edge on that S35 VN blade, and it should retain it pretty well. So the knife comes quite sharp. Here I am making some shavings. Now I should explain what I think knives like these are for, meaning a fairly short handy fixed blade. I don't believe they're for chopping or batoning. I believe a short knife like this is for piercing, slicing, draw cutting, which in this case means drawing it down a piece of wood, like you saw me doing there. That is my pile of shavings. And lastly, for push cutting, meaning steering the cut by pushing with your thumb on the spine of the knife, doing some precise cuts. Here I am making a tent stake. Right, so keeping in mind what I believe a small fixed blade is for, this is a demonstration of primarily push cutting. I am shaping this tent stake. Now, when I say tent stake, you could also think of it as a, a living dead deanimator. I'm only making this for the, just simply, I wanted to use the knife a lot. So I carved a very smoothed out, nice looking tent stake over the course of 45 minutes. And when I say carve, you know, it's more like whittling. But to get that initial shape of the tent stake, I actually used that larger knife you see there. And I used it the way that I normally use a hatchet. And when you use a hatchet, it's usually called carving. So whatever, this is a carving slash and whittling project. That's what I came up with. Now, if you only want to put a pointy end on a stick, that'll only take one or two minutes. But if you want to make it real nice and smooth and fairly symmetrical, that took me about 45 minutes. And uh, I did that just to get to know the knife. There you see it on the bed of shavings. It also produces quite a bit of shavings. Yes, more shavings for your fire kits. But we are not done yet. I actually did three different sessions with this. That's another rough piece I started out with. I actually did three different sessions with this because I really wanted to get to know this knife for the review. So all totaled, I've probably cut for about three solid hours using this knife, right? Primarily the push cutting, just because it's the safest and easiest cut for shaping, at least I find it so. Another thing this knife would be good at would be slicing. Now, when you're slicing, you're gonna be slicing softer materials than this piece of wood, so I just felt that this would be more of a test of the knife and to see if it would retain an edge, but keep in mind, if you want to slice up your lunch with this, you it would be more than capable of that, you know. A little bit of an overkill using an S35 VN blade to slice up your lunch, but you could do it, you know, and hey, it's classy. So that's what I ended up with. That required several hundred push cuts uh, to achieve it, you know, just to make it nice. Uh, you know, if I'm going to cut for hours and hours, here's uh, project number three. If I'm going to cut for hours and hours, I can't just robotically, like, just make normal shavings. I have to have some project. I have to keep interested in uh, what I'm doing. So there you go. Oh, sorry the color got jacked up on this. I don't know what happened. It's, it's, it's black and white, but you get the idea. And that is sped up even more because 
you know, you get the idea. I'm not going to show you an hour of carving, even though I, I cut for a good three hours with this knife. As you can see from my box of shavings, I do save all the shavings for uh, fire kits, and I use knives quite a bit, I'll just say that. One thing I want to point out is that a lot of times when I'm shaping a piece of wood, I will use a utility knife. Now a utility knife has replaceable blades that are far thinner than you would have on a fixed blade. There's my finished project, hope you like it. Utility knives have such thinner blades, the fact that I could use this fixed blade in place of a utility knife for this type of extensive uh, cutting, it's really impressive that this thing was sharp enough and that it retained the edge for hours and hours. Yes, this was after. Right, that was after my three carving or whittling sessions. I was just curious if it would still be sharp. It was still relatively sharp as you would expect of the good steel. This is all about the steel. This knife is all about the steel, right? Because the blade shape, it's a drop point, a little extra wide, but it's fairly conventional. The blade shape isn't like some great new invention that's going to draw you in. It's all about getting it in this steel. Right, so if you don't care about steel, then there's no reason to buy this knife if you're just not at that um, at that place where you give a crap and you just need something to cut something. Well then, I mean, you could use almost anything, just any sharp thing can cut. So final conclusions, lessons learned. Well, I cut with this for hours straight, several hundred very small, precise cuts. So... This has really good ergonomics. I mean, if there had been any hot spots, I would have felt them. It was very comfortable. Yeah, I was wearing a glove, but that's a fairly thin glove. I mean, you're gonna cut for three hours. You would feel it. So I like the ergos. It retained its edge and it was sharp enough that I could use it in place of a utility knife. Oh, what's the big deal about that? Utility knives are cheap. Yes, they're cheap, but a utility knife blade is so thin that you can't make a fixed blade that thin unless you want to be able to bend the blade with your hand. So the fact that a blade of this thickness could stand in for that, it is impressive. I mean, you could not have done those projects I did with a dull knife. It would have been annoying as hell and you'd be trying to apply so much force with it. Now keep in mind, this fixed blade is actually the fixed blade companion to a folding knife by that same designer, right? You know, Kaiser didn't just make this up. They're actually working with very well-known designers now, which is very good. So a lot of people who buy this, it's because they liked the folder so much, they said, hey, I could have the fixed blade. Or people who don't like folders, but do like the design. I really got to know this knife, definitely enjoyed using it. As I said, if you don't care about steels, don't buy the knife. But if you've always been looking for a handy small fixed blade, specifically in a really nice steel like this, that's then you're exactly who this was made for. I will include some Amazon links. Please try to use those links. They really help support the channel. And there's only one store that has this on Amazon yet. So I don't know how long that'll last but I'll put the links. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.